a global brand, how VW plans to become number one. In the interview, Volkswagen Group CEO Martin Winterkorn. You're the CEO of Volkswagen and a trained automotive engineer. What do you find so fascinating about cars? If, like me, you grew up in the post-war 1950s or 1960s, you grew up with cars as your main form of transport. You learned about vehicles and mobility from a very young age. And if you happen to have grown up in southwest Germany, close to the town of Zufenhausen, where you get to see lovely Porsche cars every day, then you automatically develop an interest in cars. That's why I'm glad I became an auto engineer. Now Porsche belongs to Volkswagen, making it even more enjoyable? I'm very happy about that because when I was a young boy, I'd see Porsches being test-driven in my hometown. And that's why I'm delighted that the Porsche brand is part of Volkswagen. Mm. Volkswagen plans to become the number one car maker in the world. Why is that so important? I'm going to say something now that journalists don't like to hear. Our objective, to make Volkswagen number one, to make it the biggest automaker, emerges from other objectives we've set. We want to have the most satisfied customers. We want to have the most satisfied employees. We want to achieve good results so we can invest in the future. And we want to build the best cars. As a result, we'll be the biggest and best car maker in the world by 2018. Are you sure you will get there by 2018? I'm quite sure. There's going to be plenty of serious competition, of course. There are two big car makers with similar ambitions, Toyota and GM. It's definitely going to be an interesting three-way race to 2018. What products does Volkswagen have to offer to get there? I believe Volkswagen must and will have the most attractive products that will satisfy our customers around the world. We're not just talking about Germany, not just talking about Europe, but about the world. Just to make that clear, we sold over 3 million cars in China last year. We're talking about the U.S., we're talking about Brazil, the Asian markets, and Russia. In all of those regions, we need to make our products attractive. That's why I say we have to develop, construct, and produce cars that above all satisfy our customers. They'll only buy another Volkswagen if they're satisfied. And when they buy another Volkswagen, our customer base will be so big, we'll be number one. But that will mean producing different cars for the Chinese market, the Mexican market, and the U.S. market. That's absolutely right. That's why we're traveling a lot to different markets to try out our cars in specific countries. In Russia, China, the U.S., Japan, Brazil, in Mexico, and of course Europe. And if you look at the demands our cars have to satisfy in China, which is an important market due to its sheer size, then we have to build a lot more glamour into our vehicles. And make them bigger? Bigger with softer seats. Why softer seats? A Chinese person weighs on average 20 kilos less than a European. We have to make the upholstery softer. In Europe, we have a more sporty approach. We're also discovering that size is of great importance in China now, like it was in Europe in the 60s and 70s. We're building bigger cars in China because the Chinese want bigger cars. We have to satisfy demands. How important is the Chinese market to Volkswagen? The Chinese market is very important to us right now. As I already mentioned, we sold over 3 million cars there last year, and China is going to continue to grow. You're sure of that? I'm quite sure. Though I've also been reading some gloomier things about China lately. I doubt those assumptions will happen. We have a very good network in China. We have 17 factories there. We're doing a lot to help rebalance the spread of wealth in East and West China. Wealthy Chinese live mainly in the East, poor Chinese mainly in the West. We built a factory in Northwest China, and we have many factories along China's Eastern Belt. So we have a very good network in China, making cars for the Chinese market. But we're also exporting cars from Europe to China. 
engines and gearboxes too. We're securing jobs in Europe thanks to our presence in China. Just to mention one figure, we've exported over 200,000 cars from Europe to China. Is Volkswagen still looked upon as a German brand in China? We're looked at as a European car maker. That's a very important aspect for the Chinese. I don't think there's a nation outside Europe where branding plays such a big role as in China. A Chinese person will never buy a Mont Blanc pen if it's a fake. They'll always want to buy an original. And when a Chinese person buys a Volkswagen, they'll want a Volkswagen. It's the same with Audi. It doesn't matter if it's produced in China or Europe. They need the brand. You're also an advisor to the Chinese Premier. What are you telling him? If you look at Prime Minister Li's priorities, they're quite similar to Europe's. First, the environment. Second, fighting corruption. Third, the issue of balancing wealth in the East and West. Fourth, solving infrastructure problems in the big cities and dealing with China's traffic problems. And if you look at what Prime Minister Li has already achieved, you'll see how focused he is and how clear he is in his goals. Speaking as someone who has gone through all this in Europe in the 1950s, 60s and 70s, I think he's got a good advisor to support him. You're optimistic about the Chinese market, but how do you view other markets, the U.S. for example? We're also optimistic about the U.S. The U.S. will continue to grow. Perhaps not as fast as last year, but thanks to the new Gulf, which is about to go on the market, and which we're presenting in Detroit next week, we're quite confident that the Volkswagen brand will continue to grow. Audi and Porsche will grow anyway. To mention one figure, last year we sold over 600,000 cars in the U.S. The Volkswagen brand has broken the 400,000 barrier for the second time, and I'm sure will grow even more in the U.S. But business has not been easy for Volkswagen. It's been tough for some of the brands in VW stable, though not others. Last year the Volkswagen brand sold over 400,000 cars. I admit we'd have liked to have sold even more, but competition is part of business, as it is everywhere in the world. The competition has been very strong again in the U.S. What we have to do now is be even better. Okay. What innovations can we expect to see from VW? As I mentioned, we're going to see a new Golf in the U.S. We're going to give facelifts to and upgrade quality in the Passat, Jetta and Beetle ranges. We have plenty of ideas that will continue to make our cars attractive in the U.S. What kind of performance will the car of the future have? The car of the future will definitely be one with as low emissions as possible. The car of the future will still be using conventional fuels, but it will also be electrically powered. When it comes to digital technology, it will set new standards. We have to make our cars more networked. What does that mean, more networked? What will it look like? Imagine it like this. Your car will be talking to my car. That could be an interesting discussion. The discussion might be, there's a traffic jam up ahead, drive around it. Or your car tells mine, if you're looking for a nice restaurant, go to the Ritz-Carlton. Or my car could tell your car, get out of the way? That might also happen. What I want to say is that this type of network that we already have with the Internet will be extended to the car. We'll need to redesign our interiors. They'll need to be quite different from today, so the next wave of innovation will definitely be in this area. You lead a company with well over half a million employees. How do you manage a company like that, one as big as that? It must be a big challenge. I think the most important thing about leading such a company is that you have to give the employees a vision. Our employees know that our vision is that we have a very clear goal for 2018. Another important point for me is that when we make a new car, like the Golf Sports Van, for example, which went into production a few days ago, 
is that I can visit the factory, speak to the employees, and ask them what they think of the car. They're all car experts. We're dealing with very competent people in the factories. 30 or 40 years ago, we had semi-skilled employees, but today they are highly skilled. They have excellent training. Many are engineers. Giving them the feeling that we're building beautiful cars, that we're there for them, that makes it relatively easy to lead a company like this. Independent of that, we have 12 brands and 12 boards of directors and management. And so, in that way, we've structured everything with a stable hierarchy. A personal question to round things up. You're a devout Christian. Does that affect you in your daily work as a manager? I've described how we stand with regard to our employees. As a Christian, I feel very responsible for the future of our employees. We're not just talking about 570,000 employees. If we include our suppliers, car dealers and family members, we're talking about over 10 million people who are dependent upon decisions made by the concerns management. I believe that it fits with our image, with my image as a Christian, that I feel responsible for my daily actions for these employees. You can look at it like this. Christianity is about nothing more than paying attention to our employees and making sure that they're fine, that they feel fine, and aren't worried about the future. So, in that respect, I think it fits in with me being a Christian. And it's still fun? Thankfully, yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do it for so long. I'm a passionate car man, and it's a pleasure every day. There's nothing better than developing new cars. And if you see these cars, it's a pleasure to look at them. And believe me, it's a lot of fun to drive them every day. Thank you.